My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. Appreciate everybody watching, liking, subscribing. Um, let's uh, get right into it here. Uh, coin market cap, 269 billion. So it was up to 275 billion, and now it's just kind of going a little bit down, a little sideways uh, today. So again, things are just kind of going sideways uh, over the past couple days. We had a nice weekend, um, but then of course after that weekend, uh, everything just seems to be going sideways. We do have some good gainers though of uh, Veritasium up 23% in the past 24 hours. Syscoin up 15, 16%. Mithril 12%. Now, it's looking pretty good. Zillica is up a little bit, 4 or 5%. Um, it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, about halfway down the list, then we start seeing some red again. Uh, so, kind of like the past couple days here. So, moving right into it here, I've been doing a lot of uh, researching on things and of course I've been talking about over the counter uh, trading uh, in my last uh, couple videos and uh, the reason why I got into it so much was you know over the counter trading obviously is what the big investors are, are using you know only the whales can really use over the counter trading um, and it keeps them obviously uh, you know dropping their risk to significantly lower um, and, and of course when they use over the counter trading they're not putting big you know, elephant foot in the water and making, you know, the price rise and price go down. So that's why, you know, over the counter trading is more um, enticing to the whales, you know, or the elephants, I call them. So, uh, you know, what is OTC trading? OTC trading is cryptocurrency that takes place that takes place away from the digital currency exchanges favored by many large scale traders. Over the counter trades are often placed by hedge funds, private wealth managers, or high net worth individuals. So of course, uh, OTC trades can be facilitate, facilitated in several different ways, including via brokers, through chat rooms, and using Bitcoin ATM. So, um, uh, you know, again, this, this, you know, if they can diversify into um, many brokers, then of course it's not big feet, you know, hitting the water all at once if they, you know, throughout the day on a day, day you know, swing basis. So. That's why it's a lot more enticing. Um, you, you know, you guys got to realize that you know when over-the-counter trading is happening, okay, um, and they're using it in the exchange. Let's just say they're not using over-the-counter trading. Let's say they're doing it in the exchanges, right? Well, if they have a dollar of Bitcoin, let's just say Bitcoin is at a dollar, okay, and they bought Bitcoin at a dollar and they bought, you know, ten Bitcoin, okay. So at 10 Bitcoin, and then someone comes in and says, hey, I want to buy one of your Bitcoin, but I want it for $1.10 so you can make a profit, you know, so it's a win-win situation. Well, you've now just turned all of your 10 Bitcoin into $1.10 each. So not only is your, you know, 10 Bitcoin um, is not worth $10 anymore, it's now worth, you know, $11 because it's now $1.10 um, per Bitcoin. So that's what I'm talking about. When an elephant puts their um, foot in the water, it makes the price go up dramatically just based on that little simple you know, formula there of what Bitcoin is. So the, that's why OTC trading is so, uh, again, again, so enticing to them because, again, they don't put their foot in the water and they change the price to $1.10. You know, they diversify it over many, many brokers and ATM machines and so on and so forth, and it really doesn't hurt the price very much using over-the-counter trading. Um, with that being said, that's why futures has such a big elephant walk, you know, when they move things and, you know, contracts are up and contracts are starting, there's big, big freaking, um, uh, movement in the pricing and that's what causes all this volatility. So we need to get these, uh, big investors out of over the counter trading and into the actual market of exchange. So I was looking into some other things because I always do. A little, I always look at an international news, UK, Asia, so on and so forth. And I was looking at Bloomberg, and then you know, this was an older article about this guy who made two hundred ninety-five percent on cryptocurrency derivatives. So looking into this guy, Jay Smith, you know, I, I, I kind of looked at his background, and you know, he didn't finish school. Um, he just started trading, and he was very disciplined in his trading, and now he's the number one cryptocurrency trader on eToro, and. Um, uh, this is not a bank. Uh, this is the perfect record set. I don't even know where that came from. Where did that come from? Getting run. Names like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Holy moly. 
And that's why I'm moving over to Brave because uh, there's just too many ads on on Google anymore. You know, I can't even hardly do a video without this stuff happening. Um, so anyway, so so the CFDs is what kind of popped my in my head from this uh, uh, article here. The CFDs, okay. So let's move into what a CFD is. All right. OTCs, remember that we have over-the-counter trading, and now and we've always had CFDs, but we don't we can't use it in the U.S. So a contract for difference, it's basically like a futures contract is what you're, you know, you're, you're uh, speculating that it's going to go short or it's going to go long. Um, and, and let's just kind of look at this chart right here real quick. So it kind of just shows you on a visual basis what a, what a CFD actually does. So you open a short CFD position. You can go long too, but, you know, CFDs are actually used a lot for shorting. Uh, so you open up a short position and then you close the CFD position and the difference in price between those two points is what you've made. Okay, so simple as that. It's a futures contract, but they call it CFDs because it's leveraged and the little guy can use these. Okay, so that's, you know, really a, a good thing to see. But again, with that being said, CFDs are off the exchange. They don't sell on the exchange just like OTC. So um, you're not really doing you know, and eToro has CFDs and so on and so forth. But again, if you're in the U.S., we're, we're banned from this because we have over-the-counter training and we have futures. So they just say, you know, no to CFD. Even though for the little guy, CFD may be good, but of course, you know, you're risking more than you're going to make uh, based on the leveraging of that. So that's why the SEC has come in and said no to, to, to CFDs because, um, you know, U.S., we frown upon all gambling, and if the risk is too high, Big Daddy SEC comes in and goes, no, 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 you can't risk that much. So it is what it is when it comes to uh, risk management in, uh, you know, per nation. But, you know, didn't want to touch on CFDs. You know, why is CFD illegal in the U.S.? And I was kind of just saying that. We have OTC and we have Bitcoin futures, and that's why the SEC has come in and said no, because basically it's just against the law at this point. So... Um, you know, we'll move forward from there. So, and this is, you know, kind of you know, newsnow.co.uk is where I get a lot of the news, um, at least for the UK. Not, not a lot of it, but not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, moving forward, proactive investors. Uh, this is uh, actually concerning, um, I was reading this actually concerning India. But then I started looking into this about L.A. and the CAN report. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, I, I played the stock market for over three years. And um, uh, my first year of stock market trading, I made 34 percent on my money. So, I mean, way, way better than, you know, a fund manager could do. And then the second one, I, I, I worked was working a lot more. So I made, made about 20, 18 percent. And then the year after that, I made about 12 percent. So, uh, and then, you know, I just started kind of going down because I was just getting busier and busier, going to school, blah, blah, blah. But I always made at least 8 to 10% on a yearly basis. But averaging out within the, within the past three to five years of what I made, I made about 18% um, overall in the stock market. So, you know, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this is because um, marijuana stocks was actually a big, big uh, number on that the first year because you know, marijuana is, you know, big, you know, it comes to stocks. And uh, I picked a couple good stocks and they, uh, they, you know, one x on me very quickly. So moving into that, you know, I started looking in the, into this and I, and I come up with LA will begin the process. Um, California legalized cannabis back in January, but the city of LA, Los Angeles has been hesitant to proceed with licensing. So now they're getting into licensing uh, throughout the summer here. And they're going to be opening up um, marijuana cultivators, manufacturers on August 1st. So and that's, you know, per the daily report. Um, so it may be a little delayed, but still it's coming in, in the uh, you know beginning of fall and of summer. And uh, I remember Canna Royalty as a good stock um, and they've now acquisitioned Flora Cal Farm. So, you know, they're just growing and they're based out of Ottawa. So it's Canada and Canada is now going to uh, legalize uh, marijuana nationwide. So, and that's going to hopefully be happening this summer as well. So, Canada Royalty looks like a really good stock. With that being said, I'm in crypto. I'm kind of out of stock right now, um, but I may pick up some of that. With that being said, you know, I've been looking into, into uh, 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 cannabis coins, 
and uh, a couple of them have really stuck out. Cannabis Coin itself, C-A-N-N, looks really, really good. Uh, Paragon looks okay. Hemp Coin THC looks actually like a really good one this year. And Canna Coin. Canna Coin um, is kind of the, uh, the OG here. So it's been around since 2014, and they're still using it as peer-to-peer. -peer, so it's actually very well known. Um, THC Coin... Uh, you know, they're strictly for the farming industry, medical recreational the dispensary. So um, that looks like a good one uh, as well, you know, to track um, things. And of course, the cannabis coin is, is just basically um, a better coin than can coin. So, all right, then, yeah, then the can, what is it the other one called? Yeah, it's called the can, can of coin. So it's, it's just a, a, you know, an upgrade from the can of coin is kind of what they're saying. And it's a rate of one coin to one gram of weed. I mean, that's crazy, you know, and, and the price of it is, is not that much. You know, I, I think it's only like a 10 cents right now, which is crazy to see. But, you know, that's, that's what they want to do. And, and if you uh, can coin and once started at 0 0.002 and now it's up to like, you know, two cents. So, uh, that, you know, that's 100 X on your money right there. That's crazy. So I'm going to be looking into one of these as either a long-term coin or a short-term hold, depending on uh, what coin is working with uh, Canada or with Canada the most. And I believe it is Canada Coin uh, that works most with Canada. So uh, just you know, food for thought. You know, when you're going into these coins, and you know, moving into cannabis coin a little bit more, it is a peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. Okay, the market cap is that you know uh, based on other uh, cannabis coins, it's actually not a bad market cap. Total supply. Actually, not that bad, and the volume isn't that bad, um, you know, uh, comparing to the other ones. Um, and like I said, Canada back on track to legalizing marijuana this year, this summer. Um, so they want to, you know, legalize it, you know, nationwide. That's gonna, that's just gonna be crazy. It's it's a huge market. So last but not least, crypto fear and greed index at thirty one, as I was kind of uh, sus uh, suspecting it was gonna do, just based on. Um, you know, the coin market cap and Bitcoin dominance. So 31 today, 27 yesterday, 18 last week, looking better, looking better. And uh, let's hope that we keep on this uh, upward trend here. Um, but I'll keep on the market as far as the futures markets and the over-the-counter markets and uh, keep you guys informed on that. So my name is Crypto Dog to the Rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. It all helps my channel and uh, the dogs that I rescue. Um, and uh, you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.